On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks are in Columbus for New Year's Eve for an afternoon matchup with the Blue Jackets. I'll get into a full preview of the second meeting between these teams in the past week, and I'll also go over how injury woes continue to plague this Blue Jackets squad. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast. Today is Saturday, December 31st. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at JackBushman2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And real quick, if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing, then please make sure to go and show some support first by following the podcast. You can also go and leave me a review if you want to as well, which I always greatly appreciate. And for those of you who may not have heard yesterday, I am officially going to be giving away two free Blackhawks tickets sometime here in the second half. How to qualify for this offer, how to qualify to get two free tickets. All you have to do is go and leave me a review either on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify and make sure to drop your YouTube channel name in there because I'm also going to check to make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube. So for example, if you leave me a review, you leave me your YouTube channel name, I choose you to win the two free tickets. I go and check on YouTube if you're subscribed to Locked On Blackhawks. If you're not, then I'm going to choose another winner. So make sure to both leave me a review through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube to qualify to win two free tickets. It's really simple. Also, if you're not watching the video version of today's episode already, then make sure to go in, check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. Every episode moving forward, folks, is going to have a video uploaded to YouTube as well. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Again, it gives you a chance to win two free tickets. It's 100% for free. It's 100% free to subscribe. It only takes two seconds, and it really does help me out tremendously. Also, make sure to go and smash the like button down below on today's video. And last, go and ring that bell. Turn on the push notifications, and that way you can get notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, enough of that. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your first listen here to start off your day, the final day of 2022, which is pretty crazy to say. I hope everyone out there listening has some solid New Year's Eve plans and is going to have some fun with a side of safety here tonight. Everyone, make sure you're safe. Make sure to plan ahead. Plan ahead with a ride and everything. Um, but the Blackhawks originally were supposed to have a 7.30 p.m. Central Time matchup with the Columbus Blue Jackets here on New Year's Eve. But just a couple of weeks ago, they actually changed the time to this game to 12 p.m. Central Time, which personally couldn't make me any happier. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do uh, on my New Year's Eve when I'm spending some time with friends and family is uh, watch this Blackhawks team go up against the Columbus Blue Jackets, the bottom two teams in the NHL standings. Uh, just not an ideal way to spend New Year's Eve. So couldn't be happier for this time change. And that's why I'm here on a Saturday morning giving you all a little bit of a preview prior to this matchup. But diving right into a preview of this afternoon's game in Columbus. This is the second meeting between these two teams in the past eight days. The first one was at the United Center, led to a 5-2 to two win for the Chicago Blackhawks to snap their eight-game losing skid at the time. Uh, but this time around, Max Domi, Jack Johnson, Seth Jones, former Blue Jackets, are all going to be returning to Nationwide Arena in Columbus uh, and as I mentioned before, this could be perhaps the least interesting game on the schedule that you could draw up at the moment with the Blackhawks being the worst team in the NHL at 8-22-4. And, and then the Blue Jackets being just two points ahead of them at 10-22-2. and two. 
Number was one and two in the Connor Bedard standings across the NHL right now, folks. So uh, low key, maybe high key, both these teams might not be trying to come away with uh, any points in this afternoon matchup to really solidify their position as we're closing into the midway point of the season. But as we found out last Friday night at the United Center, this Columbus Blue Jackets team, my word, they are just so depleted right now in terms of injuries. And I had this conversation with Jay Forster, the host of Locked On Blue Jackets, in a crossover that we did yesterday. For uh, If you want to check out that crossover, get a little bit more insight on both the Blackhawks and the Blue Jackets rebuild and how our situations are different and also the same at this point in the season. Make sure to go and check that out on the YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it definitely feels like if the Blue Jackets weren't this injury depleted, they wouldn't find themselves at the bottom of the NHL standings. But at the same time, and I said this to Jay kind of bluntly, I don't think anyone necessarily, you know, after the addition of Johnny Goudreau in the summer, I think people obviously had different expectations around Columbus. And uh, a lot of folks thought this could be a playoff caliber team, but I don't think anyone around the NHL thought the Blue Jackets had a realistic chance of taking home the Stanley Cup this season. It feels like before they, you know, really open up that window, Kent Johnson's going to have to develop further. Cole Sillinger is going to have to develop further. Feels like David Yerichek, who's having a monster world juniors right now, feels like he's probably going to have to have to step onto the scene. It feels like Columbus, their, their true window isn't going to open until some of the young talent that they've drafted and accumulated over the years fully steps onto the NHL scene and are ready to be true different makers, not just Cole Sillinger being 19 and being up there, Kent Johnson being 19 and being up there. I, I just think it's a little bit too early for this Blue Jackets team to truly contend for a Stanley Cup, and that's why it's probably not the worst thing in the world that they find themselves at the bottom of the standings right now. And Jay Forster said it himself. Look, if there was one year for everything to kind of go kaput, and for the team to fall apart and to be bad, this would be the year when you look at a draft with guys like uh, Connor Bedard, Adam Fantilli, Leo Carlson, Matvey Mykov. The list goes on and on. There are a lot of reasons to not be very good this season. So while it's been, you know, a, a, a tough stretch for Columbus early on here in the season due to all their injuries, uh, I'll get into their projected lineup, which is uh, not very good on paper coming up here in just a little bit. But just the reality of their situation right now, and it's really not the worst place to be because if they go and add another, you know, high-end prospect in this year's draft, I really think that could give Columbus, you know, hopes in the future and perhaps could, you know, kind of take them over the hump by adding a superstar like that early on in the NHL draft. So a very interesting situation for Columbus to be in right now. And again, if you want a little bit more perspective and insight on their position, make sure to go and check out that crossover that I did with Jay Forster yesterday. But coming into this matchup, as I said, I'll, I'll get into Columbus's lineup here in just a little bit, but uh, the Blue Jackets have dropped eight consecutive games coming into this one, folks. Does that sound familiar, Blackhawks fans? Does that sound familiar? Oh yeah, that's what the Blackhawks we're looking at heading into the game on Friday. So Columbus, we feel you. We know that feeling all too well. Uh, but yeah, today, two bottom feeders in the NHL meet up for the final time this season. It's the final game of 2022. Who wants to wrap up this season with a W? Can the Blackhawks pick up their first three win month since October? They only had two wins in the entire month of November. They're stuck on two here in December heading into their final game. We'll see if they can get over that hump. But getting into some of the team stats here real quick. Obviously, they're not pretty for either side, which is, you know, why they're in the position they are right now. But for the Hawks, they have, as I talked about yesterday, the worst offense in the entire NHL, averaging just over two goals per game. 2.23 goals per game, actually, is what the Blackhawks are averaging, despite having the 17th best power play in the NHL. And the man advantage looked really good on Tuesday against St. Louis. Puck movement was awesome. Hopefully that can carry over to uh, this afternoon's matchup in Columbus. On the defensive side of things, the Hawks rank 29th in goals per game, and they're 26th on the penalty kill. Although they've now um, 
They've now gone two games in a row without surrendering a PPG, which has been, you know, uh, a much needed improvement. Let's see if they can make it three games in a row here this afternoon. And then on the Columbus side of things, they're 27th in the NHL in goals per game, but 30th on the power play. So one of the worst man advantages in the entire NHL. They're also 31st in goals allowed per game. And if you go and look at some of the goalie numbers this year, it's been pretty ugly uh, for the Columbus netminders. The one area that they kind of excel in, they're 17th on the penalty kill. It's kind of funny how these teams uh, kind of match up. All their stats are towards the bottom of the NHL. And then in one category, both of these teams are ranked 17th in the middle of the pack. For the Blackhawks, it's on the power play. For the Blue Jackets, it's on the penalty kill. So something has to give here this afternoon when these two bottom feeders meet up in Columbus. As far as some keys to victory real quick, three quick keys that I have for the Blackhawks to come away with two points. The first one is for the power play to stay hot. The man advantage, as I just mentioned, look, looked tremendous in St. Louis. The puck movement was swift. They moved it with a purpose. Uh, they got multiple good looks off while maintaining possession of the puck. That's what's going to need to be kept up today. The Blue Jackets, their their penalty kill is the one area where they are a little bit better, but I think the Blackhawks should have the advantage in that aspect. Uh, find Patrick Kane, basically. I like moving him over to the left dot where he sniped home the power play goal, the lone goal for the Blackhawks on uh, Thursday against the Blues. I like him in that spot better. I like keeping Domi to the right side. And I think it's really important for Seth Jones at the top of the top of the key to shoot as well. My second key to victory is for Alex Stalock to keep this momentum going. Look, there's not a lot of fun with this Blackhawks team this season. Alex Stalock is one of the few guys that provides true entertainment. And at the same time, he's playing pretty damn well in that. He's only given up two goals in both his two starts back from injury. I think it's really important for him to keep the momentum going, keep uh, having some fun in that, keep playing his style because it's been working and it's certainly not boring. <laughs> the Blackhawks could use more of that throughout the way. And then my third and final stat is for the Blackhawks to hit 30 shots on goal today. Be aggressive with the puck on your stick. Don't leave any stones unturned. Be firing pucks on that. This Columbus defense, <laughs> go and look at it. It's not the strength of their team. They're depleted back there. They're without Zach Lewinsky. Uh, this is an opportunity for the Blackhawks. They put up 38 shots on goal last Friday at the UC. I think if they get over 30 here tonight, odds are the Blue Jackets defense and goaltender combo is going to have some breakdowns. And I think uh, getting 30 shots on goal would be a big key for the Blackhawks to come away with the win tonight. All right. Coming up in just a moment, folks, I will get into the Blackhawks projected forward lines and defensive pairings for this matchup. And I'll also talk about Alex Stalock getting his second straight start in net. But first, I need to talk to you all about the NHTSA Drive Sober campaign. And let me paint a quick scene for you. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. Few becomes too many. In the evening, as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think about calling for a ride, but nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are often tragic and deadly. However, that doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence of alcohol. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, then think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride because it only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. So drive sober or get pulled over. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Segment two, let's get into what we can expect out of the Blackhawks lineup today. And once again, folks, Coach Luke Richardson said there isn't going to be any changes, meaning Forrest Kachuk will be in the lineup once again after yet another tough night on Thursday in St. Louis, basically handing Josh Levo the game-winning goal in the second period with one of the most brutal turnovers I've seen all year long. Uh, to be fair, though, I do believe neither Jujar Kara nor Mackenzie Enwistle are at 100% right now, so that could be the reason behind 
uh, keeping Kachuk in the lineup. But more importantly, the decision to have Ian Mitchell healthy scratched for the third consecutive game is, well, certainly one that's just not sitting well with a lot of Blackhawks fans right now. And I'm right there with you. I've been screaming this on the podcast for the last week, not to toot my own horn, but even before Mark Lazarus was writing about it, your boy over here was screaming, play Ian Mitchell. It wasn't making any sense to me. And Uh, it still isn't. I don't understand this decision at all. And listen, I understand that Ian Mitchell is going to be 24 years old here in just a couple of weeks. His clock is ticking. There's no doubt about that. Um, But it it feels like there wasn't, if there's not, there's not plans for Ian Mitchell already, regardless of how he's playing, because in his last three games, he's looked really good. The best that I've seen him maybe up at the NHL level. So if he's not going to be part of the plans at all this season, um, I, I don't know what what the goal is here. What are what are we doing? Why are we just having Ian Mitchell sit around getting healthy scratch? There, there are so many other ways that he can be used right now. If it's if and if it's not the way that he's playing, I, I it has to be that they have their minds made up on him already. That because that's just the only plausible explanation from an outside perspective, because I don't know what else would be keeping this kid out of the lineup. As I said, his three games in December since being healthy scratch, since he had, uh, I forget who he had a bad night against, but three games in a row, I thought he's looked really good. There's no chance of him getting back in the lineup. Three games in a row now, he's been healthy scratched. And look, if they already had their minds made up about him, why did they even bring him back? Why did they even bring him into training camp? Why didn't they try to trade him? Or or maybe they did, and maybe there wasn't anything they could get for him. But this just feels like the worst situation to have him in right now. I mean, up at the NHL level, not playing games regularly, he could be down in the A, at least getting game action. Um, And now the Blackhawks... They, they're not playing him. They might as well trade him or, or try to do something that's best for this kid. Because, look, Ian Mitchell's a good kid. And he's speaking out to the media publicly about how he's frustrated. Like, I, I think that should kind of give all you fans an idea about how kind of backwards the situation is. It's not like Ian Mitchell's like a, a vocal kid or a, a spoiled kid in college that was, you know, calling the shots and trying to get himself in the right spot. No. We haven't heard Ian Mitchell say anything like this in his entire career so far. So for him to speak out on the situation to Mark Lazarus of The Athletic, I think it should speak volumes to how wrong the situation is. The Blackhawks just aren't handling the situation right. And if Ian Mitchell's not in the lineup tomorrow, when the Blackhawks take on the San Jose Sharks, Send him down or trade him. There, there's no point in him just standing around not developing anything. And look, if he's not part of your plans, at least do him the favor of trying to find a spot for him to play in. Because right now, being in this limbo position, it's the, it's the worst position in the world. And he's clearly frustrated. The team just doesn't seem to have any aspirations about his future, which is really frustrating after kind of thinking, going into training camp, This was really going to be a make or break year in Ian Mitchell's career. He obviously gets hurt, suffers that wrist injury, misses a good portion of the early part. Um, But it it feels like it's just an unfair circumstance. Like he did everything in his power last year with Rockford to be a top pairing guy, really kind of round out his game a little bit better. I thought it was smart for the Blackhawks to finally leave him alone and let him develop in Rockford. And then this season, it was really going to be, all right, Ian, time to see what you learned last year. Time to see if you have the tools to become a full-time NHLer. And they just haven't given him that opportunity. They, They simply haven't. And I don't know what has led them to this conclusion. If they've watched his last three games, he's been good. I think, again, you just need to give him consistent action. They really haven't done that at the NHL level since he was a rookie and was clearly in over his head at that time. I don't know. I could go on a whole whole rant about this that would take up an entire show's worth, but there's just no reason that Ian Rich, Ian Mitchell should be sitting around night after night. I have no idea truly what the thought process is behind this division, this decision. But as far as the Blackhawks lineup, yeah, going to be the same as we saw 
against uh, St. Louis on Thursday, meaning Tyler Johnson, Max Domi, Patrick Kane as the top line. Philip Kershev, John Montaves, and Taylor Radish had themselves a really solid night. Hopefully they can find a goal at five on five here today after being held uh, without a goal on Thursday. The third line, too. Ever since they've been paired together these last three games, Andreas Athanasiu, Jason Dickinson, and Sam Lafferty have been tremendous. They've been providing a lot of much-needed energy to this forward group every time they're out on the ice. And then with Kara and Entwistle still being out, as I talked about earlier, that leaves the fourth line as uh, Boris Kachuk, Reese Johnson, and Colin Blackwell. On defense, we can expect to see Jake McCabe and Seth Jones again as the top pairing, which I think should be left alone for the rest of the year or – at least as long as Jake McCabe's here. Uh, he's having a really strong season, and I've thought ever since he got paired with Seth Jones, Seth's game has elevated as well, which has been nice to see. Second pairing will be uh, Isaac Phillips and Connor Murphy, and then the third pairing, our favorites, Jack Johnson and Caleb Jones. Alex Stalock, though, will be the one getting his second start in a row here against Columbus after a really strong outing in St. Louis, despite coming away with the loss. And I talked about this yesterday, how uh, it was going to be interesting to see which way Richardson was going to go with uh, who who he wanted in between the pipes for the front end of this back-to-back. Winds up being Alex Stalock, and hey, I understand this decision 100%. You know, both guys have been good. morazic has been really solid in a couple of his last starts, but I think kind of taking into account... Mrazek's entire body of work this season, which, yes, to be fair, it has been smaller than Mrazek's, but uh, Stalock, even just like looking at the numbers, there, there's no denying he's been damn good in, you know, basically all of his starts so far this season. He's only given up more than three goals twice, and one of those came against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers, so uh, there's no shame in that whatsoever. I get going with Staylock here in the front end of this back-to-back. He played really well on Friday against this Columbus Blue Jackets team. Why not ride the hot hand and then just give Peter Mrazek the start tomorrow night at the UC against the San Jose Sharks? Before I wrap up the show today, folks, I did want to talk for a second about the Columbus Blue Jackets projected lineup for this matchup. Uh, as they might be one of the most injury-depleted teams I've ever seen. Just pure flashbacks to the Montreal Canadiens last year where their lineup was like basically what they would have thrown out there in Laval. Uh, But for Columbus today, we know they're going to be without Jake Voracek, an unfortunate situation for him that sounds like it's going to cost him his season. Uh, Zach Wierenski is on LTIR as well. Captain Boone Jenner is out. Jake Bean is out. Uh, Igor Chinikov is out, and now Patrick Laine isn't going to be playing today either as he's currently in COVID-19 protocol. The Blackhawks killer, Patrick Laine, it feels like always has a snipe in his back pocket every time he plays the Chicago Blackhawks. So no Voracek, no Wierenski, no Laine, no Jenner to lead the way, no Jake Bean on the back end, no Igor Chinikov, uh, no Blackburn, another defenseman for them. It's absolutely absurd and as a result Columbus uh in my opinion at least has somehow some way put together a worse lineup on paper than the Chicago Blackhawks watch the Blackhawks now go and get throttled today just because I said that um but looking at the Blue Jackets lineup here real quick the top line is Johnny Goudreau Kent Johnson and Kirill Marchenko second line is Gustav Nyquist Jack Roslovic and Emil Bemstrom Third line is Eric Robinson, Cole Sillinger, and Carson Meyer. And the fourth line is Liam Foody, Sean Corrali, and Matthew Olivier. Then on defense, top pairing is Gavrikov and Bork. Second pairing is Bernie and Eric Goodbranson, who I still cannot believe got a 4 by 45 this offseason. Maybe the worst contract I've ever seen in my entire life. That is, this guy's literally just a goon. You paid him, paid him $4.5 million to be a goon out there. The sad part is he's probably the best healthy defenseman that the Blue Jackets have right now. And then down on the third pairing, they have Bayreuther and former Blackhawks first round pick Adam Boquist, who's only played in eight games himself this season. So it has just been an absolute mess for Columbus. But as I talked about earlier, there's one year for this to happen. It's this season. Columbus, because of this, is in a good spot to land perhaps one of uh, the – several potential franchise-altering players 
that are projected to go at the top of the 2023 NHL draft. As far as this meeting, the battle of the bottom feeders, folks. We'll see who wants to emerge with one last victory before the end of 2022. Don't forget, this is a 12 p.m. Central Time puck drop coming to you here on New Year's Eve. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Saturday, December 31st episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Make sure if you're not already to go and follow the show and go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube, and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. Thanks again for making Locked On Blackhawks your first listen here to start off your weekend. Now for your second listen, make sure to go and check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with experts that only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you all for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talkin' Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, it's going to do it here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.